want to thank Sasha Bisco, president of the Friends of Allensworth. And I uh, thank everybody who came out to the park for Rededication Day. Um, I appreciate being invited to say a few words on this special day. As Sasha said, my name is Susan Anderson and I'm the history curator at the California African American Museum. Uh, we're based in Los Angeles, but we're a statewide museum and our mission is to collect and preserve and present African American history of California in the West. And I'll also say that uh, my involvement with Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park goes back a long way. Um, the namesake of the park, Colonel Allensworth, had been thinking about organizing an independent settlement governed by Black people for many years. Uh, you'll learn from being there that Allen was the son of Phyllis and Levi Allensworth. He was born in Louisville, Kentucky in April 7th, 1842. And his life story is really remarkable. Almost everything we know about him uh, is from the one biography of Allensworth. It was published in 1914 by a friend of his, Charles Alexander, who's an African-American author, lived in Los Angeles. The biography came out the year that Colonel Allensworth died. And it's really something when you think about it that there haven't been any books about Allensworth published since that time. <laughs> Nevertheless, the, the Colonel's life was full of achievements. He escaped from slavery. He was educated himself. He was ordained as a Baptist minister. He did um, extraordinary work as an educator. He was one of the first black officers in the United States Army in the 19th century. But what we're commemorating today is his inspiration to establish a town that became named for him. And long before he retired with his wife and daughters in Los Angeles in 1906, Colonel Allensworth had been dreaming about establishing an all-Black town. This is a blueprint of the Allensworth tract where you're standing. And um, on the day that the town was dedicated in 1909, Colonel Allensworth gave a speech uh, making clear what the primary intention of the town was. And he said, the chief object of this community will be to aid in settling some of the vast problems now before the country. Perhaps the greatest question before the American people today is the relation of the races. A large number of our fellow countrymen have been taught for generations that the Negro is not capable of the highest development of citizenship. If we expect to be given due credit, Colonel Allensworth said, our race must be in a community where the responsibilities of its municipal government are upon them alone. So the town of Allensworth had primarily a civic objective. And it was not just the vision of one man. Uh, Allensworth was joined by co-founders like William Payne, an educator who was the principal of the school, founded in 1910. Payne also ran the Glee Club in the town. It, there was a group, something like the Fisk Jubilee Singers, and uh, they were very popular and they toured the region. Another one of the early important pioneers was Oscar Over. He came um, to Pasadena from Kansas. And Over was elected in 1914 by the Allensworth voters in the town's own voting district to become the first Black justice of the peace in California. And it's important to note that um, Josephine Level Allensworth, Colonel Allensworth's wife, was his closest partner in the town's endeavors. She and a lot of other women in Allensworth exercised a great deal of leadership 
and Mrs. Allensworth donated the land on which the Allensworth Library was built. And she was a member of the first school board in the town. And I want to remind everybody that Allensworth is part of a larger history. Between the late 18th and early 20th century, in the United States, more than 1,200 Black settlements, enclaves, and towns were established in this country. So Allensworth was part of what I call the Black Town Movement, which, especially after Reconstruction, was mostly a westward movement. And it began, really, as a refugee crisis as African Americans left the South after Reconstruction, um, after the withdrawal of federal troops in the former Confederacy in 1877, after the rise of the Ku Klux Klan and Jim Crow. And um, this is a picture that's in the National Archives of a, of a drawing that shows the collaboration between violence and vigilantes in the South after Reconstruction and uh, with the word saying that this period for some people was worse than slavery. So as another piece of information about that movement that Allensworth was a part of was um, the, the Kansas Exodusters. They were an example of um, a remarkable migration in the United States after uh, Reconstruction. 6,000 African Americans left the South for Kansas. And the um, exodus was so great that it was a refugee crisis, the first refugee crisis in the United States. And the United States Senate held hearings about the numbers of people who were leaving the South. Um, the one of the leaders of the uh, exodus and the Kansas exodusers was Benjamin Singleton, who was called Pat Singleton. And interestingly, uh, later one of his sons would help settle Allensworth, Joshua Singleton, with his wife, Henrietta Singleton, who was a nurse and a midwife. And another example of this movement, um, this map shows the all black towns that were created all across Oklahoma from 1865 to 1920, more than 50 identifiable towns. And if you're able to see the red dots and the red letters, those are towns that, that are still viable and are still incorporated. And also we have to mention the freedom colonies that were established in Texas during the same historical period. And at this uh, time, uh, scholars uh, uh, who are studying this in Texas have found more than 550 of such independent settlements in uh, Texas, and they're plotted here on this map. And if we come to California, we're going to find something similar. Um, on the left is a map that was put together by Professor, Professor Michael Isinger of African American settlements in the Central Valley. Starting in 1880, big agribusiness in the Central Valley was growing cotton. And their first idea was to recruit black labor uh, to to pick those crops. And those were some of the earliest uh, migrants to the state. Also, if we go further south down to Imperial County, we'll learn about El Centro, uh, which was a black enclave established in 1917 in the desert. And it was a very, became a very important center because William Payne the principal of the Allensworth School um, moved to El Centro and helped train uh, black teachers uh, in the schools there. And here are here is another example of a black settlement in California that's still there. 
way up in the far north of the state in Siskiyou County by Mount Shasta, the Lincoln Heights area of weed. And um, you, what we're seeing here are two buildings from the past. Um, Danny's Barber Shop is on the right and the Mount Shasta Baptist Church. So these are just a few examples um, of the, the way that this movement and the way that Allensworth was a part of a movement that was national and in the state of California. What we're looking at now is a mural that was painted by an artist on a street in a, in a historically black neighborhood of Independence Heights in Houston, Texas. It was painted last summer during the height of the protests over the murder by police officer Derek Chauvin of George Floyd. And it says, Black Towns Matter. So what I want to say and emphasize is that Colonel Allensworth and his co-founders were highly aware of the Black Town movement. They held the same ideals, the desire to own land, the need for safety from a hostile and violent society, economic independence, and especially political autonomy that motivated other African-American settlements. So as you take in Allen's work today, remember that its founders consciously chose to participate in the Black Freedom Movement by creating this town. Thank you so much for your attention and enjoy this special day. Thank you, Susan.